Like Death and Taxes, video game sequels are one of life's absolute certainties, but the pressure that falls upon the developer of a successful game is unmistakable to deliver a sequel that's at least as good as its predecessor, if not significantly better. And though the likes of Rockstar Games and Naughty Dog have constantly one up themselves with each new sequel release, the history of the medium is filled with sequels which botched their attempts to deliver a rich new experience. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video game sequels that made everything worse. Number 10 Resident Evil 6 after Resident Evil 4 thoroughly revitalized the survival horror franchise with its over-the-shoulder combat and more expansive locations, Resident Evil 5 began pivoting the series further towards action while de-emphasizing the horror aspect. Resident Evil 6 then saw Capcom commit fully to a new era for the new franchise, where genuine atmosphere and terror was bafflingly scarce, replaced with comically over-the-top Michael Bay-esque set pieces that left little lasting impression. Add to this a bloated single-player mode comprised of several overextended mini campaigns, and the result is a game that simply strayed too far from the rejuvenating brilliance of RE4. While Leon's campaign at least attempted to pay homage to Resident Evil's earlier years, the game as a whole feels uneven and schizophrenic, and is in turn unlikely to fully satisfy either the action or horror crowds. On the plus side, its divisiveness eventually led Capcom to give the series a soft reboot with the brilliant Resident Evil 7, which by returning to its survival horror roots and radically unfolding folding from a first-person perspective was a game-changer for the better. Number 9. Prince of Persia – Warrior Within there's actually a rather fun game nestled somewhere inside of Prince of Persia Warrior Within, the follow-up to the much-loved franchise reboot The Sands of Time. Warrior Within is a baffling project for many reasons, most of all that despite releasing barely a year after The Sands of Time, Ubisoft decided to take the sequel in a drastically different direction. The result is surely one of the most aggressively early 2000s video games ever made. A self-consciously edgy game touting a new grim dark style and tone, complete with an emo-baiting redesign for the prince, and the the addition of gory new finishing moves. In a decision that's aged like milk, Ubisoft also adorned Warrior Within with a metal soundtrack, including use of Godsmack's I Walk Alone during the game's chase sequences. Between all this and the needlessly sexualized characters Kylina and Shadi, Warrior Within is what happens when executives decide they want their game to appeal to angsty hormonal teens, despite the previous games being a commercial juggernaut on its own merits. Mercifully, the next game in the series, The Two Thrones, achieved a more suitable compromise between the swashbuckling of the sands of time and the more atmospheric darkness of Warrior Within. Number 8. Halo 5 Guardians Though many fans hoped that Halo 5 Guardians would cement 343 Industries as the confident caretakers of the FPS franchise following the slightly uneven Halo 4, it sadly only further shook faith in their ability to deliver a product worthy of the namesake. Despite being marketed on the strength of a campaign which would pit Master Chief against Spartan Locke, the bulk of the single-player mode shoves Chief to the sidelines, while even the highly anticipated showdown with Locke is a massive anti-climax. Many fans also took umbrage with both the addition of Iron Sights and and the portrayal of Cortana, which was perceived as inconsistent with previous depictions. Then we get to the multiplayer, which has always been the reliable meat and potatoes of the Halo franchise, and yet which was infested with microtransaction nonsense. While 343 also made the decision to eliminate the popular split-screen multiplayer mode entirely, the moment-to-moment -moment gunplay is still fun enough that it'd be unfair to call Halo 5 bad, but it nevertheless represented the series at its most utterly pedestrian and uninspired. Hopefully the upcoming Halo Infinite might cause correct things, though given its evidently rickety development and quasi-open world presentation, it could very well be another disappointing misstep. Number 7. Devil May Cry 2 Though it originally started out as a prototype version of Resident Evil 4, the original Devil May Cry was ultimately very much its own beast, a deliriously entertaining character action masterpiece which introduced the world to silver-haired demon hunter Dante. Expectations were through the roof then for the sequel, no matter that Capcom rushed it to market less than 18 months later. Despite this expedited development cycle, Devil May Cry 2 was a shockingly marked departure from its predecessor, with both the combat and puzzle systems being 
significantly simplified for a more casual audience, while the original's famous difficulty was also massively nerfed. The environments lacked the ornate quality of the first game, the set pieces were less refined, and perhaps worst of all, Dante's signature cocky chatterbox routine was severely reined in. Even the decision to introduce a second protagonist on a separate disc, Lucia, felt half-baked, given that it so thoroughly retrod everything from the Dante missions. Thankfully, DMC2 proved to be a minor blip in the grand scheme of things, as Devil May Cry 3 restored basically everything missing from its predecessor, and the series has been flying high ever since. Number 6. Tomb Raider – The Angel of Darkness Though it's right to say that the Tomb Raider series began to spin its wheels around the turn of the millennium, it wasn't until the release of 2003's The Angel of Darkness that those wheels fell off entirely. Developers Core Design, who were clearly thoroughly fatigued at having produced annual Tomb Raider games between 96 and 2000, nevertheless endeavoured to make their first outing on PS2 hardware a far cry from the series' formula. The hope was that The Angel of Darkness could compete with more modern action-adventure games by touting a grittier, more cinematic style introducing RPG elements such as interactive NPCs, offering a greater emphasis on stealth a la Metal Gear Solid, and even a second playable character, Curtis Trent. Yet due to the game's infamously roughshod development, it ended up being littered with bugs, forced players to contend with a terrible camera, and was basically an ambitious yet failed attempt to move the series forward. As a result, the Tomb Raider IP was put on ice for the next few years, and only fully regained its popular footing with Crystal Dynamics' Uncharted-esque reboot in 2013. Number 5. Spyro – Enter the Dragonfly you couldn't really go wrong with the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy, after which developers Insomniac Games moved on to the Ratchet & Clank series, leaving the fourth Spyro game, Enter the Dragonfly, to be helmed by lesser-known studios Check 6 Studios and Equinox Digital Entertainment. Still, how bad could it be, right? Pretty bad, as it turns out. Enter the Dragonfly wasn't just a crushing disappointment, it was the pure antithesis of the joyous, intelligent craft present in the original trilogy. Even if you could forgive the short playtime and scant amount of content, the level design lacked the nuance of its predecessors, the frame rate was wildly inconsistent, the controls were weirdly unresponsive, and it was full of bugs. This basically felt like a pale shade of what came before, with Insomniac president Ted Price even calling it an absolute travesty, and referring to Spyro as an abused stepchild. Woof. Much like Tomb Raider, Spyro's transition to the next generation of games hardware presented challenges that the development team simply wasn't able to resolve. As a result, a planned sequel was cancelled, and the series fell out of mainstream popularity until the release of 2018's Reignited Trilogy. Number 4. Mass Effect Andromeda as much as Mass Effect 3's release was met with a fierce fan backlash, that had little to do with the core gameplay, but rather Bioware's inability to provide fans with a satisfyingly fluid, branching ending as originally promised. And so, the inevitable fourth game didn't really need to give the series a major makeover or readjustment. But that didn't stop Bioware from making Mass Effect Andromeda a bold step away from the existing formula. Though distancing itself from the events and characters in the prior trilogy wasn't inherently a bad thing, Bioware ultimately failed to populate Andromeda with a cast of characters that were nearly as interesting as Commander Shepard and co. The most radical change from the first three games, however, was the addition of open-world style gameplay. While a natural fit for the expansive Mass Effect universe ended up feeling more blandly generic than truly lived in. Elsewhere, many players were frustrated with the myriad of bugs and, of course, the infamously terrible facial animations apparent upon launch. Andromeda isn't a bad game, all things considered. The combat's pretty solid, for one but it is a solid step down from its three predecessors, smacking of another developer basically trying to create an imitation Mass Effect game. Given that Bioware tapped their Montreal outfit to lead development rather than the Edmonton team who made the original trilogy, it's not terribly surprising that it made players feel this way, or that its production was massively troubled. Number 3. Driver the original Driver is one of the PS1's most beloved video games, for those who could actually make it past that infuriating opening driving test level anyway. Driver 2 didn't reach the same heights despite including positively ambitious on-foot functionality, yet it was a solid enough sequel for the most part. 
Then came the obnoxiously monikered three pull driver, where the E is replaced with a three, which like the aforementioned Tomb Raider and Spyro games, marked the series' big leap onto next-gen hardware. Despite the power of the PS2 and Xbox, however, Driver was an absolute shambles of a game, not only making on-foot action a bigger part of the experience, but also introducing gunplay in a desperate attempt to capture a slice of the Grand Theft Auto fanbase. Sadly, the gunplay was rancid and only kept players at arm's length from the only really fun part of the game, the driving, while also demonstrating how generally joyless it was to behold. Had it been executed correctly, Driver could have catapulted the franchise to new heights, but instead cratered it into the earth, such that it's endured a mere moderate curiosity ever since. Number 2. Dead Space 3 the original Dead Space was one of the most innovative and unforgettable survivor horror games of its generation. While the sequel served up a brilliantly balmy rollercoaster ride of stomach-noddingly intense action, however, Dead Space 3 ended up basically pulling a Resident Evil 6 by venturing too far from the series' horror roots and placing a far greater emphasis on action schlock, including, oddly, human enemies, which while fun to a point, lacked the gut-wrenching atmosphere of the two prior games. Again, like Resident Evil 6, the the threequel is a distended, wildly overlong experience, and though the optional co-op adds a neat enough wrinkle, EA's decision to plug microtransaction nonsense into the game's crafting system was met with justifiably intense backlash from the fanbase. Dead Space 3 isn't awful by any means, but it is a sequel that jettisoned the soul of its predecessors. Number 1. Dynasty Warriors 9 even the most casual Dynasty Warriors fan knows that the series hasn't ever been much for evolution. You pretty much know exactly what you're gonna get in each new installment, and that's basically fine. But 2018's ninth game made the shock move to dispense slightly with the hack and slash formula by introducing an open world, with players able to freely traverse a map of China as they saw fit. There were far worse ideas for the future of Dynasty Warriors, honestly, but the end result was a predictably cynical attempt to cash in on the popularity of open world games today. And so Dynasty Warriors 9's open world was bereft of life, packed to the gills with generic missions, collectathon busy work, and somnambulant NPCs. It's basically everything fans feared when the changes were first announced, and proof perfect of how difficult it is to make a truly worthwhile open world game. Amusingly, the upcoming strategic expansion Empires was recently confirmed to be ditching the open world elements, which is really all that needs to be said about how egregiously they failed here. Let me know down in the comments if you can think of any other video game sequels that made everything worse. As always, I've been Jess. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.